Hi, my name is James Stone from jamesstone.com and in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about learning Zurb Foundation and what are some common pitfalls that people run into when trying to learn the framework that may make it more difficult for them trying to learn. All right, so number one, the first thing that I see people struggling with when they're trying to learn Zurb Foundation is they just didn't invest enough time upfront to learn the basics of like how to set it up. They literally kind of throw a couple things in their HTML file and maybe they don't have a very good understanding of HTML or CSS and they just don't know why it doesn't work. And they tend to just post this stuff online, Stack Overflow, my thing doesn't work, I don't know why. And it's usually something simple, right? Simple things and this is common to web development, maybe you didn't close a div, maybe you didn't add the quotes, right? There can be a lot of different things that can really wreak havoc in HTML. And so these little basic problems, if you're really not up to speed with HTML or CSS, can really make it difficult when you try and throw a huge framework like Zurb Foundation or in any case, you know, Twitter Bootstrap, either of these, you throw that on top and then it just makes things even more complicated to figure out because you, you just don't know why that's happening, right? Okay, so number two. So number two um, thing that I see people struggling with is that they basically want to like connect one thing to another thing. They're like, oh, I want to use Zurb Foundation with X. And X could be anything. Firebase, Angular, Drupal 7, Drupal 5, WordPress, any of these things. And so rather than like spend the time to really see if it's gonna work well or having a thorough knowledge of the framework and just want to implement it yourself, people often just jump in, try and connect these two things. Usually I wanna use foundation with X kind of framework or backend or so on and so forth and it doesn't work or they don't know and they just blatantly ask the question. So that's something that people really struggle with and often a lot of those problems have already been solved. So some really good resources to look for if you're trying to figure out if something is going to work for you in a particular framework or something new you're using, like, you know, let's say it's Shopify or something like that, is to search for themes or starter themes, right? Just on Google, that's one place to start. Another really useful resource is the Zurb Foundation forum. And often people answer, you know, ask these questions and there'll be a whole bunch of different answers and they get ranked up so you can kind of see which one is the best answer. Another one which is a favorite of mine and it tends to be a little bit more tech oriented, a little bit more programmer heavy, is Stack Overflow. So look for a question and often what I just do is go on to Stack Overflow itself, search from there, don't search from Google, and then say, you know, Drupal 7 foundation or observe foundation and see what comes up, see what types of things people are talking about and read through all the, the things that people mention. Remember, not all answers are good ones. And so you might just be a little bit, you know, away from finding a gem. So another resource is actually to go on GitHub itself or to limit your search to GitHub domain from Google and just do a search for projects that are Zurb foundation with X. So for example, WordPress, I have a particular preference and I've been using for quite some time. This uh, starter theme is called Reverie. And I like it because it's very fast for me to just go and modify the CSS just as I would with any other foundation project and just kind of move on. It doesn't do a whole lot of extra stuff, but just allows me to quickly make a foundation based theme and style it and make it look the way that I want to very, very quickly. And it works exactly the same as kind of the standalone SaaS version of foundation. All right, so what number are we up to? I'm not sure, four or five, maybe we're at three, I'm not sure. So what are some other things that people struggle with? So I mentioned trying to connect Zurb Foundation to another technology, maybe on the back end. So another thing that people really struggle with is trying to get it to work with something like a jQuery plugin. Now, the question is, does Zurb Foundation work with, and it could be anything, jcrop? for example, some sort of jQuery plugin. You found some cool slider, whatever that happens to be. You want to use it, your client wants to use it, who knows, but you're stuck trying to figure out if it's going to work. And you might go and search the same types of things. Does this work with that? Now, I would encourage you not to post questions like that and actually try and do the research yourself. So it's a problem that I came across quite a bit. I wrote a book, it's called Zurb Foundation Blueprints, and in it I had to create nine different projects and they all work with different types of technologies like this and so how did I know if they were going to work with Zurb Foundation? 
because some work, some don't, some are just slight modifications you have to make, some are pretty intensive. So usually you want to try and find something that's going to work with Zerg Foundation out of the box or really only needs minor modifications to work well. So what I do is I create a simple prototype. And let me explain what that is because you hear this word all the time, prototype, prototype, prototype. I literally go on the command line, create a new version of Foundation, and I do this for each individual jQuery plugin that I might want to use or any sort of thing I'm going to plug it into. And I create a new Foundation project, right? And you can do this through Bower. And often if you're using Bower and you can bring in the jQuery plugin, great. That just makes it easier, right? And then I just do a simple proof of concept. I go use Foundation, bring in that jQuery plugin, and see does it work within Zurb Foundation? Yes or no? And you can usually get that answer right away. And you can see if there's any going to be any issues with it, right? Like isotope, masonry plugins, that type of thing. And there's just slight differences and slight things you need to be aware of. And so you can resolve that issue and see if there's any issues right away by creating a very simple prototype to see how it works within Zurb Foundation and being instantiated after Zurb Foundation with all of its jQuery plugins running. And so I did that for each and every little piece. And then what I do is start to combine them. So let's say I'm working on a project that has three or four of these different jQuery plugins or elements that might be working together. So I start, so I have like four different little prototypes, right? And it seems like maybe a waste of time, but I have them all separate. And then I go and can bring them all together, right? Piece by piece and see if they're working. Now, sometimes it works fine and awesome, right? Move on with your day, but you tested it and you know it's gonna work. You can feel you know rest assured or you know tell your client yes for sure we're going to use that because you know it's going to work with Zurb Foundation right now sometimes you might run into some issues and it just might be compatibility issues between the jQuery plugins themselves so it might be removing one of them or something like that but anyways this is just a strategy to help you to try and understand like Zurb Foundation how do these components work within it how can we see if it works well and this is a very simple way and a very fast way to test it without having to do very something very complex. Now, often what I see beginners do, and I've been guilty of this myself, and it's caused a lot of heartache in the end, is I have some sort of big system and I decide I'm using Zurb Foundation, and then later on I'm gonna add something else, let's say that's select two or something else or whatever it happens to be, and I start plugging everything in, I start linking to the library, and you know what? It doesn't work the way that I intended. Well. At that point, you have a much, much more complicated problem to resolve. And so often if I find myself in that situation, I try and go back, okay, what was I thinking? I'm gonna go back and build these little prototypes and see what's causing the issue. And then it helps me to try and identify that. So big tip, save yourself some time and build these little prototypes. See if the thing's gonna work first. And then if it does, great. Move on and build the huge app or build it into your app, right? Okay, so I think we're on number four. So number four, big tip I would give people trying to learn Zurb Foundation is to know how to ask questions correctly. And you might have heard, I just mentioned, don't ask questions like this. And, and it's not that you don't wanna ask questions at all, right? But you do wanna ask questions, but you wanna make sure that you ask questions in a way that you get an answer that helps you, right? So, you know, often, I, I go into these forums too and I try and help out and, and be a part of the community, but sometimes, you know, people don't give you enough information to actually be able to help them with the problem. So here's the thing. If you're going to ask someone something to help you with this herb foundation, you really need to have some sort of way to show exactly the source code there. Now I know maybe you're working on something in stealth mode, you don't want to put all the code online. We'll create some sort of abstraction of what it is and put it online so it doesn't have anything secret there and then put it up on somewhere, right? Code pen, um, you can host on your own site, but somewhere where someone can go, like someone like myself, view the source of it, see if there's any issues right away, and they'll say right away. And, they, and then they can you can start to learn how those tools that developers use to, to troubleshoot things, right? Like, you know, the Chrome Dev Tools, all this type of stuff. It, it's, it's really important for you to do that. So when you post a question, don't just post a question and not post the code or come up with something random. Put it online somewhere, right? Put a working example of it, even if you're abstracting it, right? Or covering up whatever it is you don't want people to see and let people look at it because then they're gonna be able to really help you much more. Now, the other thing is you wanna really clearly articulate the question, right? Make sure you say, and, and you have to try to fix it yourself. So like, you can't just like 
be blatantly asking questions all the time. Like, you know, who, who does that, right? You know, fix my problem. I've never tried to fix it. Just fix it for me. So what you want to do is try to f solve the problem first. And you can talk about that. Hi, I'm so-and-so, and here's my problem. I've tried to solve it by doing one, two, and three, but I haven't gotten it to work. I really don't know what the problem is. And so you talk about, like, what are the steps you went through? Here's a link to the live source, and here's what I think might be the problem, you know? And then, you know, just be very open about it. Now, the other thing I, I see people do with this is then they go and answer their own questions, right? So if you're going to ask a significant question, let other people answer it. So I will just tell you, if you ask some sort of question and find the answer for it yourself in about 30 minutes or an hour, no one really cares, right? Like it's, it's really important to you in the moment. You're like super important to me, but overall what it does is it kind of pollutes, it kind of pollutes all these forums and that kind of things it, in stack overflow. It's kind of bad manners to answer your own question. And in fact, you're supposed to let other people answer it, right? Like, so you found the answer. Great. Maybe leave a comment in it. Maybe do something simple. But by answering the question, you, you kind of are telling the community, I don't really care what you think. I'm smarter than you, or I figured it out faster, or, or whatever. Or you didn't, you know, phrase the question properly. So I would suggest if you ask a question, let it sit up there for a few days at least. See if you get an answer, right? Now, the other thing that I see people do is is maybe they're suffering from some of these problems. They didn't clearly articulate the question. Maybe someone doesn't have the expertise to answer the question, and they kind of get antsy, and after a few days, they're like, oh, any answers? Oh, what what's up with this? I would suggest don't do that either. It's also kind of, you know, it's, it's bad etiquette to, to do that. What I would suggest instead is try and bring it to the attention of people who are strong in the community. For example, send me a tweet. If you have something on the Zerb Foundation forum or Stack Overflow, you can't figure it out, well, send me a tweet. I'll definitely take a look at it. Just bring it to my attention in a way that's like not super obnoxious, right? Not demanding an answer. And, you know, copy the Zerb Foundation Twitter. Twitter is a really wonderful resource and, and there's a lot of great people on there who are looking at this stuff all the time. So definitely take advantage of the community. All right, so that's number four. Ask really good questions. Be awesome in how you ask your questions. And it's a great way to learn. And in fact, that's how I learned. And a lot of what I did, you can go look at my Stack Overflow. I got involved in Zerb Foundation. I got fired up. I, I was asking questions or reading things. And then all of a sudden, I'm answering those questions for other people. So I would say number five big thing, right? Trying to learn Zerb Foundation, not only do you ask questions, give back to the community. So at some point, you're going to start to know something really well. Maybe you just like really know buttons really well, or you're starting to really get the grid. And you see people asking questions, the same types of things you have. So start answering those questions. Now, I'm not saying you have to be on Stack Overflow, like constantly answering these things or on the forum, but maybe you can start a blog or start to document those things that you've learned. And so what that does is it helps to kind of reinforce those ideas and the ways that you've learned to use Zerm Foundation so that you'll have a lot better like long-term recall of it, right? So that's number five, kind of give back to the community and, and share with people. So anyways, five quick tips about how I think you can get a little bit more out of learning Zerm Foundation within the open source community and have a lot more fun doing it. Thanks for watching.